Recrystallization is a technique used to purify substances in organic chemistry. One of the first things that we have to do when we recrystallize a sample is we need to make sure that we pick an appropriate solvent. Uh, typically, we want to pick a solvent in which the solute, that's the thing that we're trying to purify, is generally insoluble when that solvent is cold, but soluble in the hot solvent. The solvent, our mixed solvent, should have a steep solubility versus temperature curve. So here's our solubility and temperature. Here's a solvent, A. This solvent here has a low solubility at room temperature and a low solubility at a higher temperature. So it's not a great solvent to use. Right? Solvent B. Solvent B has a high solubility at room temperature and a high solubility at a higher temperature. It's not a good solvent to use either. Line C, however, if we look at the room temperature, that is a low solubility and up at the higher temperature we have a high solubility. So this is a nice choice of a solvent to use. Now, let's look at an example here. Let's imagine that we have two compounds, compound A and compound B. And we'll use water to do our recrystallization here. At zero degrees Celsius, they have both the same solubility. 10 milligrams dissolves in one milliliter. And at 100 degrees, that's boiling, right, for water. At 100 degrees Celsius, 100 milligrams of each compound will dissolve in one milliliter of that water. So let's imagine here that we have an Erlenmeyer flask. It's what we typically would use to do a recrystallization. Um, and in there, we have a mixture of 100 milligrams of A. That's the compound that we're trying to purify. And in there, we have mixed in 10% are 10 milligrams of an impurity, which is compound B. Now, before we start the recrystallization, we need to do two things. We need to put in a boiling stone, or sometimes we'll use a spin vein. Right? And then we're going to pre-wet it with about a a quarter mil of, a, of our solvent here. So we need to get it a little bit wet. And that's because we don't want to put it directly on the hot plate without any solvent in there because it could risk melting our solute. So we pre run it. We put it on our hot plate. Now we're going to boil the solvent. And we can see the heat rising and creating a vapor there. And we either do this directly on the hot plate or sometimes we use a sand or an aluminum bath or even a water bath. Now the solvent temperature here is 100 degrees Celsius, and assuming that we haven't lost any solvent, which we have a little bit, we have 0.25 mils. Okay. Now note in the end that we're going to have to add one milliliter of solvent in order to get that 100 milligrams to dissolve, right? Because the solubility at boiling is 100 milligrams in one milliliter. So, if solid remains after we've brought that to a boil, which it is. We need to add more solvent. Now when we do that, if you're doing a microscale procedure, sometimes the solvent might be at room temperature. Right? It doesn't take long to bring um, half a mill of water up to a boil. If you're doing a, a large recrystallization, however, we often will boil the solvent so that we can reduce the time it takes to do the recrystallization. Nonetheless, we'll add more. So we're gonna add another half a mill of our solvent. We'll bring it to a boil and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here we're at a solvent temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Solvent volume added is 0.75 milliliters. And we still see that we have solid left in this. So we're going to add more. In the end, we want to get the total volume added up to 1 milliliters. So we'll bring that up to 1 mil by adding, you know, a quarter more mil there. Now, a lot of times we don't know what the exact solubility is. So we just have to do a recrystallization. It's fairly simple. What you do is you add the solvent like we did before, you bring it to a boil. If you see any solid left, then you add more solvent. You bring it to a boil. The same thing, If you, you just keep repeating this. If you see more solid, you add more solvent and you bring it to a boil. And at some point in time, we're gonna get almost everything to dissolve. So we either want 100% of that solid dissolved or you know 99% so if there's one tiny little crystal left sometimes we can use our glass stirring rod to crush it up and, and break that down a little bit. Now what we have here is our sample of 100 milligrams of A. It's been dissolved in that one mil of solvent now. It's at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius 
and we want to allow this to cool. So we're gonna take it off the hot plate and we're gonna place a watch glass on the top. That's gonna to help prevent the solvent from further evaporating. And then we're gonna place it on a cork square on our desk and we're gonna allow this to cool slowly. This is important. Now, when we allow this to cool slowly, a couple things are gonna happen. Let's take a look. Here's our solvent temperature. So it's on our little cork square. Solvent's at 90 degrees. So we can see these little uh, orange hexagons. These are the things we're trying to allow to form a crystal. They're floating around in solution and hopefully they're gonna form a nice crystal lattice structure with each other. So in essence, kind of what we've done here is this, right? By dissolving our sample that had impurities in it, it's kind of like we have this large stack of oranges at the grocery store. But in all the little holes where the oranges are, we have grapes. And by dissolving it, we've taken them all, and we've thrown them all up in the air, and they're all floating around in space and, and, and moving around, so to speak, and landed on the ground, but they've all separated away from each other. And what we're doing is we're allowing this to cool slowly. So when that happens, we allow sufficient time for molecules that have the same type of packing capability, which are identical molecules, to start to form a crystal lattice structure with each other. And this is like in the grocery store, we have thrown all this fruit up in the air and we're grabbing oranges and now we're carefully stacking the oranges back up on to the shelf, but we're avoiding grabbing up any of the little grapes along the way. Now we've gone down to 70 degrees and our crystals are growing and you can see 60 degrees. Now we have larger crystals and it looks like we might have a couple of these triangles caught in here, but we again allow sufficient time for cooling and those move out of the way and we get larger crystals. So then we're down to close to room temperature here. And what we want to do is we want to decrease the solubility even more. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it on ice. We put it in an ice bath. That'll take us down to zero degrees. Now we can't really do this gradually, but we've allowed it to go to room temperature gradually. And then we then are going to have larger crystals and sufficient time to move these little impurities out of place here. So in the end, what do we have? Well, in that solution, right, we're going to have um, 10 milligrams of A that are still in that one milliliters, right? Because look at zero degrees and one mil, we can hold 10 mg of each A and B. So in that liquid down here, there still will be 10 milligrams of A and 10 milligrams of B. Good thing is that B is all in there and that's the thing we're trying to remove. So we removed it all essentially because it's in solution. Now, when we collect our solid, in theory, we'd get 90 milligrams. But because of transfers and stuff like that, our yield will be less than 90 mg. But perfectly right now, we might say, well, you have 90% before you, before you carry on the rest of this uh, uh, purification. Now, what if you cool it too rapidly? Well, this is like throwing all the fruit up in the air and rather than carefully avoiding all the grapes, you just take a big snow shovel and you start chucking it back up on um, the shelf and you're grabbing the grapes. You don't care what else is in there. Everything's just getting mixed in. So here you're at 100. Now you're at 20. Maybe you put it on ice directly. And because you're not allowing sufficient time for these little triangles to be excluded from the crystal lattice structure, in the end, they're trapped in there. Now, that will be reflected in um, two ways. Number one, you'll have smaller crystals. They'll be impure also. And that will, of course, mean that you have a lower melting point when we check for purity. Well, what happens if you add too much solvent? Well, this is a common mistake to make. So you overshoot it, either because you are moving too quickly or because you thought you needed to add a lot of solvent to get that last little crystal to dissolve. Well, if that's the case, then you keep going and you add more. So let's look at our example that we did before. So let's say here that you already have one mil in there and uh, you see a little crystal in there and I don't know, you throw in four more mils. That'll give you a total of five mils. You bring it to a boil, everything's dissolved, so you're feeling pretty good about yourself. And you go through and you allow it to cool to room temperature slowly. And then you try to figure out what your yield is. Well, we have five milliliters. So 10 milligrams of B remains in the solvent because that could hold up to 50 milligrams, right? But five milligrams will hold 50 milligrams of A. So that means that the solid will be only 50 milligrams. So before we had 90 milligrams, right? And now we have 50 milligrams. So your yield went down quite a bit because you added too much solvent. 
If you ever feel like you do this during a chemistry experiment, you can always fix this by boiling off solvent. So depending on what that solvent is, it could take you know, a few minutes, or if it's water, it might take quite some time. One of the things you might have to do is you might have to induce crystallization. So sometimes you allow your solvent to cool down slowly to room temperature to find that you have no crystals formed. And we do something called seeding here. So we dip a stirring rod into our, um, into our solution. And it's probably going to be an Erlenmeyer flask, but we stick it in there. And then we pull it out. And that, uh, that glass stirring rod will have solvent on it. We allow that solvent to evaporate. And then what you're left with here is a couple molecules, and there'll be more than a couple, right? But you'll have molecules of your solute that have solidified on them. Sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. And then you stick that back into the solution, and what it does is it provides basically a template for the crystals to start forming their crystal lattice structure. Now, if this happens very rapidly, you have to repeat your recrystallization. If it goes slowly, then you're good to go. Sometimes you have to do something called decolorization. So you might know, for example, that your solid is a white powder, but your solution might be orange. In that case, what you can do is you can add a little bit of activated charcoal or powder charcoal or pelletized norit. And that'll help kind of pull any of the compounds that are imparting color to that solution out of solution. And then you'll have this like slush in there and you have to do a hot filtration. So you filter it into a filtering flask and then you're, voila, you're, you're done with your purified uh, compound. At least you've removed the color, right? The other thing that we have to watch out for is oiling out. So we want to make sure that we pick a solvent that has a boiling point higher than the melting point of the solid. Otherwise, we could melt our solid and you get this weird kind of oil formed in that solution. Now, when we collect our crystals, we typically we use a vacuum flask and a Hirsch funnel. Sometimes we'll use a Buchner funnel, but we'll just vacuum flask that stuff and we'll collect our solid. And then what we have to do is we have to allow those crystals to dry. So we allow them to air dry. We can use an oven sometimes. Now, if you do use an oven, you have to be sure that that oven temperature is set below your solid's melting point, right? Otherwise it will melt. And then the other thing that we do sometimes is we'll vacuum dry. So if you just continue to run the vacuum through this and kind of crush up the crystals, moving them around, depending on what solvent you use, you can get a dry um, sample somewhat quickly. Mm -hmm.